What's up, guys? This is One Bit Universe. This is going to be Ruby Chibi Episode 8. Uh, when it comes to uh, many things I got to say about the comedy segments in this, I am, am hoping they get more comedy segments with uh, Nora, because Nora in of herself is a comedy segment. <laughs> so uh, they have a lot of things they can do with her, because I love her uh, uh, just spontaneous personality and stuff. And along, and along with her weapon, because it's very dangerous and very highly, oh my god. And people have still been comparing her to a Pinkie Pie only with more... Insanity, considering that she actually has a fully loaded weapon that she can use at any given moment. However, Pinky does have a party cannon. So there's that. Which does scare me a bit. So, yeah, we're just gonna get started with this episode. Oh, three, two, one, now. <laughs> alternate reality. This is an alternate reality. Again, I always have to remember, remind myself about that. Hmm. Ah, oh, the pickle jar. You can do it. You can do it. Here's the, here's the thing, Ruby. I can't even open a pickle jar, so hey, this needs to be motivation. That's not. It's not the way, Ruby. Jill, of course. All that, all that work for nothing. It's one of the worst things to ever do in life. Don't think, don't. No, you're not. <laughs> you remember, 100 push-ups, 100 sit-ups, 100 squats, and a 10,000 kilometer run for three years. Do it. If you really don't like, you like your body. Come on. No, 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 don't get mad because of that. No, I... I'm sorry. <laughs> we're going on a hike. We're going on a hike. Today's the day. Hip, hip, hooray. We're going on a hike. It's on a hike. That's a, that's a sprint. And made it out of Beacon. Hey, don't look at me. This stupid compass must be broken. Keeps leading us in circles. Yeah. No See, point. now it's telling me north is back that way. Uh, Jean? <laughs> oh. Ah, right. <gasps> I'm sorry. <laughs> Again, that, hey, that, might, that might... Ren found this old stack of VHS tapes. You want to help us sort through them and see what's on them? <laughs> um... <laughs> Come on, okay. Uh, well, I'm guessing this is gonna be a running joke. Every time she gets scared, something magnetic happens. Second basement. What? Super secret vault. Do not enter. Yes, of course. Oh, this place. This place brings back so many good memories. There you go. There you go. All right. Well, that that was it. Uh, for those for those who don't know where that room is, it's uh, probably gonna be pretty lost. But I, I get it. Um. Okay. I can see the running joke of up here getting scared and something magnetic happening is is gonna be a thing. And <laughs> I'm liking how they're using Pura in this. And uh, I I think. Oh, what happened in the la in, in the one segment where uh, John is it, it, that Pierre is the one uh, making the compass uh, make the thing go north all, all the way because it's always tracked to uh, where she is. Uh, that actually reminds me of a comic that uh, I've actually read at, in, at the college that someone made. Uh, if the X Men along with Magneto were like best friends and stuff like that, Magneto would be the one messing messing with and tampering with uh, the uh, 
uh, the compass to go wherever he wanted to go because they, they, were, they were constantly getting lost in, uh, in areas. Plus, they were teenagers, so it wasn't like they were all grown-ups, in case you were thinking like that. It was a pretty good comic. I wish I could show it to you guys. But, yeah, that, that, that would really remind me of that. And just, again, comedy levels in this. It, these, episodes, these episodes, I'm pretty sure I said this before, it's just for people who are not prepared for what season four is going to have to offer because if if what happened in season three is anything to go by i can expect the entire world blowing up in season four <laughs> volume four uh and and, and and just like that I, i'm also doing these videos in like rapid succession also because i got like an animation to do for class and i shouldn't be here doing youtube videos but you know I, I like doing YouTube videos, and I actually need to get some content out for you guys, and this sort of things might uh, let, hold you over for a set amount of time until I'm actually completed with all the stuff. This is why I'm also avoiding doing anything uh, entirely too long, so, uh, like, Lewis Fetch Up still not a thing. I, I, again, I, I don't have enough time, don't have enough time, but I will see if I can do it on the weekend uh, when it comes to Lewis Fetch Up. If it doesn't come on the weekend, I'm sorry, uh, but I will try. At least that'll be a thing in my head, unlike other times where it's not in my head. So yeah, let's let's just get that out of the way. But as for Ruby Chibi, these are just very short uh, episodes. Uh, only thing to talk about is the, to the amount of comedy level that is in particular parts, and I really do like how they're implementing Pyrrha and these sort of things, despite you know the awkwardness that is Pyrrha existing. So hey, I thought it was completely awkward when the first came out, and I see a certain person with two arms. So hey. Let's just get that out of the way. It's completely... It, 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 that's how I pretty much already knew this was beef. Again, this, uh, if they're making that joke like that, they should have said this happens in a completely separate universe. And we already kind of suspected that it happened before Volume 3. Because two, uh, a person has two arms that shouldn't have two arms. So, let's get that out of the way. So, yeah. This is, do you want to be the universe? See you guys next time. Bye.